Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be discussing the terms atom, molecule, and particle, and talking about chemical formulas and chemical symbols that go along with those names. On your screen you should see a number of different colored paper clips, each labeled with a chemical symbol. These paper clips are here to model the elements of the periodic table. Just like the elements on the periodic table, these paper clip symbols are composed of one capital letter and, if needed, a second lowercase letter. These capitals are going to be important when distinguishing how many different types of elements are making up particular larger chemical chains. So starting up at the top, we see sort of the most simple form of our paper clips. They're sitting there on their own. Each individual paperclip can be referred to as an atom. So on the left, we have an atom of B. On the right, we have an atom of PU. As soon as we start linking those atoms together, though, you can see we start to form more complex structures. These structures have a name as well. We call them molecules. Molecules are just atoms that have been linked together. And those linkages in chemistry we call a chemical bond. And you can see there's a wide variety of different types of molecules we can form by using chemical bonds. So here in the top left, what I see is I've linked together an atom of B and an atom of PU to form a new structure. I'm going to name that structure by linking together the chemical symbols. So this particular molecule is going to be called BPU. Notice I've paid attention to where the capital letters are. One atom of capital B and one atom of capital P, lowercase u. You can use the same logic to name the other two molecules on the screen. Over here, I see that PU is present as well as the element Y. However, there's more than one Y atom. And I'm gonna designate that using numbers as subscripts. So what this formula now tells me is that this one element, PU, there's only one atom. However, there are two of the Ys in this particular molecule. We can use that same logic down here. This molecule looks unique because it doesn't link together two different atoms, it links together two of the same PI atoms. We can show that in the chemical formula by saying we only have the element PI, however, there are two of them, and that's what that lower subscript 2 is going to show us. You'll notice both of these molecules on the left are only made of two atoms. There's a very special chemical word for that, and it's diatomic. So if I ever refer to something that's diatomic, what that means is that it's made of two atoms. So both BPU and PI2 are diatomic. However, PUY2, because it's made of one, two, three atoms, is not diatomic. A few people get thrown off by the idea then of generalizing and starting to use the term particle. Particles can describe groups of atoms or individual atoms. You can think of it like this. If I were to pick these atoms up, whenever I pick something up, it and everything that comes with it is a particle. So up top, this individual atom of B is a particle. But here, this whole molecule of BPU is a particle. Over on this side, this whole molecule of PUY2 is a particle because those atoms are chemically linked and have to be treated as a group. So keep in mind when you're um, counting atoms and when you're looking at molecules, you can use the chemical formulas to represent physical attachments of atoms. We can use this term diatomic to describe molecules that are formed with two atoms. And we can use subscripts to help us distinguish how many of each atom are contained within one molecule. 